friends from the media, good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference. Mrs. Karen M, the chief executive and government officials, will uh, give addresses and to be followed by questions and answers. We're still in the middle of a pandemic, so please observe social distancing. Mrs. Karen Lam. Friends from the media, fellow citizens, welcome to the press briefing. Last week, when I announced that tightening of social distancing measures, I uh, said that because of the rapid transmission of Omicron, while uh, we imposed a two-week a period of the uh, tightened social distancing measures. Uh, we'd like to uh, give you an account of the situation after seven days, i.e. one month, and also uh, after one week, and what we're going to do uh, after the uh, two week. Now we are on the eighth day, and uh, we have an idea of what happened in the past seven days, so I'm going to give you an account of these measures. And to support industries directly affected by the social distancing measures, premises uh, and uh, closed down because of these measures and a ban on evening dine-in. I'm going to um, introduce epidemic anti-epidemic fund 5.0 to give them some support. Now today is the four now this is uh, January, exactly two years uh, in our fight against the pandemic. I'd like to say that uh, we have been uh, rather successful in the past two years. From this chart, you can see several waves of outbreak. Uh, people described that we're currently in the four, in the fifth wave. By and large, uh, the uh, outbreak is under control. In particular. For a long time, uh, the red line, which represents uh, local cases, have been rather flat. Uh, that is, uh, we have uh, got very few, or if not uh, zero, local infection cases. Compared uh, with other parts of the world, we have done quite well. We have uh, a total number of uh, 13,025 cases. So among 170 countries we are, Below them, now uh, for every million um, a population, uh, we have only got one thousand odd cases and twenty eight ca deaths per million. So uh, we only account for about four percent of the total number of cases in the world. Now, because Omicron is highly transmissive and it has replaced Delta as a major variant. Now, so uh, we must not uh, let off our guard. And the first case, the first imported case, uh, was uh, only published by the Center of Health Protection on the 30th of December. The so-called uh, Moon Palace case, and uh, it was the first um, unlinked case, local case. Uh, it uh, happened to a surveyor in Tumun Moon uh, on his way to work. He passed Victoria Park uh, to North Point, and uh, we were worried that she he got infected from the dense cluster. That took place on the 4th of January. He was tested preliminary positive, and on the 5th of January, it became a confirmed case. The uh, CHP, because could not identify the source, classified it as an unlinked case. Fortunately, after epidemiological investigation, it was found to be linked to the Six Garden restaurant cluster. So it was an important link case. Now, uh, it's now time to uh, sum up what has happened in the past week. Now, because we have the circuit breaking measures and other measures, so from 180 cases uh, per week, we uh, fell to 141 imported cases in the past week. Now, uh, we've only got 200 odd um, arriving passengers on a daily basis at our airport. Obviously, the number of imported cases would f drop correspondingly. Meanwhile, Import linked cases with epidemiological links grew in the past week. From 17 in the past week, it uh, grew to 42 cases. And just now, Dr. Zhang Chukwan 
uh, gave you a briefing and the uh, route of transmission of a goods handler in a supermarket in supermarkets was yet to be identified we could not find uh, the uh, route of transmission although a uh, gymno sequencing told us that it was linked to the uh, female flight attendant because we have yet to identify the route of transmission there is cause for concern to uh, tackle the outbreak of Omicron in the community. We have done a lot in the past week so far. We have uh, done over 1.1 million nuclear exit tests. How, how are we able to achieve that? We have got 460 locations involved in uh, compulsory testing notices. Uh, these are places uh, confirmed cases have been to. And we have also done 30 rounds of restricted testing uh, in uh, 30 residential buildings of uh, confirmed cases. And over 90,000 members of the public have received notification through the Leave Home Safe app. They are to be tested at testing centers. And for uh, residents in two months, so long as they are willing, they can uh, come forward to be tested. They don't have to worry whether they are subject to a CTN or RTD or not. Of course, we have stepped up contact tracing with over 30 um, staff members working in our office. Most of them are from the disciplined services and uh, over 4,700 uh, persons have been arranged uh, to go into our quarantine center. Now, we have done so many nuclear exit tests, and uh, many members are subject to compulsory testing. They have encountered some unpleasant experiences, and uh, some had to wait for a long time. On behalf of the SL government, I apologize to them. I ask for their understanding. We have to raise with time. Uh, in this uh, very short uh, period, we have mobilized a lot of manpower, and yet uh, we are not able to satisfy everybody. Meanwhile, I have to thank our colleagues working at our airport, at our quarantine center, uh, colleagues from the um, uh, civil aid services, and also um, testing contractors. They have worked very hard to uh, collaborate with us. Now, to fight uh, the outbreak of Omicron, Apart from what I just announced, uh, we have also announced a number of measures that are expeditious and sharp and focused. Uh, now, we have uh, suspended uh, flights from eight high-risk uh, places. So uh, we announced a measure on the 5th, and it came into effect on the 8th of January. And then uh, starting from the 7th of January, we have uh, drastically tightened social distancing measures. And then on the 11th, I announced that starting from today, that is the 14th, primary schools, kindergartens, um, child care centers, and uh, KG come child care centers will uh, suspend face-to-face -face classes. In fact, uh, many uh, KGs and CCCs are suspended face-to-face -face lessons on the 11th when I announced the measure as of today all have uh, stopped face-to-face uh, -face classes. So what have we achieved? We have uh, got 59 uh, import linked cases. At least 29 of them are uh, Omicron related. Some uh, could not be tested perhaps because of uh, the genome sequencing. Uh, Dr. Lam can supplement later. We've got only one local case which is uh, yet unlinked, and that is the goods handler at supermarkets. So far, we have yet to see a major outbreak, which uh, is seen in other places. Once Omicron has made its way into the community, the number of cases would grow uh, geometrically. So uh, in the past few weeks, we haven't seen any um, thing happening like this, and I think this is a good sign. And then uh, the uh, person concerned was already uh, put under quarantine, and the virus was identified. 
when uh, the patient is under quarantine. So we've been able to place uh, people carrying the virus uh, under quarantine so they're not able to move around freely in the community. So for cases where genome sequencing has completed, they were all found uh, to have um, connected to two important cases involving flight attendants. So we have got some focused and uh, uh, and uh, expeditious and a uh, boat measures, and we're able to uh, see from uh, octopus transactions that we have seen uh, reduce the mobility in the community, and this is what we want to achieve. But the latest um, assessment is um, the COVID is uh, not yet under control. Uh, there is still a risk of um, an outbreak. I learned um, from the uh, press conference uh, that um, the CHP also uh, said likewise. It's um, premature to say that um, the COVID is, uh, has been brought under control. I'd like to uh, now uh, take you through uh, some of these and the um, Director of uh, Health uh, will be going into further details. First, when Omicron um, cropped up, um, there were two cases of um, possible vertical transmission. Second, there are two uh, clusters, and obviously there is some um, more than one uh, super spreader. There are many uh, confirmed cases um, that have uh, not been inoculated. Uh, we've seen within a fortnight's time six uh, generations of transmission. Now, there are some confirmed uh, patients uh, who have had uh, symptoms for quite, for quite some time and they haven't sought uh, medical attention. And they were roaming around in the community and we may have uh, silent chains of uh, transmission in the community. But that's why uh, we try to um, conduct testing uh, in Tunbun district because um, these, this person uh, probably roamed around um, in Tunbun. The other uh, phenomenon is um, from the hospital authority. For those uh, who have admitted to the hospital, only 30% of the infected cases uh, displayed uh, no symptoms. This is not consistent with overseas experience. Um, from overseas experience, a lot of uh, people are asymptomatic, those suffering from uh, Omicron. The 70 percent of um, the Omicron patients in Hong Kong do display symptoms. We are worried that there may be asymptomatic Omicron carriers um, who are still in our midst in the community. So our assessment on this basis is that there is still a risk of an outbreak. So today I'm going to be announcing a whole series of measures. The first one Beg your pardon. From uh, 7 uh, to 20th of um, January, uh, all these uh, measures would have to be extended by another fortnight uh, to the 3rd of February, uh, third day of the Lunar New Year. I am aware that this will let a lot of people down because this is uh, spanning over the Lunar New Year holidays that people might expect uh, to have um, a um, comfortable, a, a warm family gathering. This may not be happening. And some large scale events will have to be cancelled, uh, like the New Year Fair and also uh, some of the um, spring events uh, organized by the Trade Development um, Board uh, will have to, to be cancelled. Also, we, we need to um, stamp out um, imported cases to minimize the burden on the uh, hospitals and the circuit breaker uh, system for flights um, will be extended um, to the 4th of February uh, by another 14 days. Now, the COVID situation in these jurisdictions is uh, still severe, so we have to adopt these measures. After the Lunar New Year, after these, um, the, the end of these uh, social distancing, distancing measures, um, that's on the uh, fourth day of the Lunar New Year, unless um, the COVID situation has taken 
uh, a turn for the worse, or unless uh, there is an outbreak, we are going to be progressively relaxing the, the restrictions for the premises. There will not be any prolonged um, restriction. Now, when these um, businesses are up, um, up and running again, like the beauty industry, uh, then we will have to bring in the vaccine bubble. In other words, I made the announcement on the 24th of uh, February, and these originally um, people needed to, to have uh, vaccination uh, to, to gain access to, to these premises. We have, we have to advance or bring forward uh, these measures. And also, we are going to be um, launching the um, AEF uh, 5.0, uh, like the COVID measures, our social distance measures, we like to make it quick. On the 7th of January, we have tightened up the social distancing measures. Today, 14th of um, January, a week on, we are able to announce and roll out all these measures. Compared with um, the previous rounds, um, I mean, there was a gap of two months uh, for the third round and a gap of one month for the fourth round. So this time, uh, we are making things happening very, very quick. And today is Friday. Next week, we will be accepting applications. And we would seek uh, to disperse uh, the funding uh, in the early part of um, the Lunar New Year, if not earlier. The total commitment uh, will be uh, $3.57 billion. In the AEF, uh, we still have a 4.5 or 4.4 um, billion dollars plus. We need to uh, reserve uh, some funding uh, for uh, the um, the remaining payment, so we can um, actually activate um, the fifth round of um, the AEF without uh, going through electrical. This is as fast as uh, we can manage. Now, certainly, this will be um, targeted. Uh, we basically target at two areas. Uh, First, the, uh, there are premises and people uh, that have been affected by the first round of uh, social distancing measures. And the premises include um, the food establishments that are no uh, nighttime dining, um, beauty parlors have to be closed, um, fitness centers, and also the sports coaches and arts practitioners because the co of the closure of the premises they are not able to engage in these activities. The second uh, area is um, they've never uh, seen any recovery. That's because Hong Kong is not able to reopen um, the, the border, and they have uh, been in deep freeze uh, for a long time, and they, they include um, the cross-boundary passenger um, sector and the tourism sector. Now, for eligible uh, premises and individuals, uh, we will be basing on the fourth round. Uh, we will be adopting a streamlined approach. That, that will make things happen very fast, because if uh, we have to um, redo the uh, criteria for the premises, it will take um, a pretty long time. So we will be work working on the basis of the fourth round of um, the AEF in terms of uh, eligibility. Now, for the funding, um, subsidy level, I announced um, an additional 14 days, and the total um, restriction measures will be at 28 days. And in the third round, um, they will have to bear um, 44 to 65 days. And for the fourth round, um, between 57 to oh, and 158 days. So we have to, to bear in mind these period of uh, restrictions. So this four week of uh, restriction, we will be working on the basis of the fourth round. In terms of the funding, we will offer half of that amount. If they are affected, uh, then it would be half of um, the, the fourth round uh, for premises or one uh, two thirds of all individuals. Now let's say um, the catering premises, we uh, work on the basis of the 
the size of um, the license premises through five tiers if they do have um, the liquor license that there would be additional subsidy so for these um, catering premises less than 100 square meters um, the one off uh, subsidy would be fifty thousand dollars more than 100 uh, square meters and under 200 uh, it would be one hundred thousand dollars and so on and so forth I don't think I can be exhaustive uh, with uh, regard to the precise details but right after this uh, press conference we will be issuing a press release and you will get to see um, the level of subsidy for individual categories also we've closed uh, some um, premises and uh, there will be some subsidies uh, from the LWB and this is um, targeting at the uh, suspension of um, the in-person classes for the um, child care centers and the um, interest classes uh, and, and the um, instructors there. In terms of education uh, there are some institutions and people who are affected by the uh, suspension of face-to-face -face classes uh, like uh, 1,000 or so kindergartens in Hong Kong. They will be entitled to some subsidy. There are some primary schools um, that have been closed. There are some uh, school bus drivers uh, who are affected. Again, we will offer them some subsidy. Now for the uh, CEDB measures, uh, they haven't seen any recovery. As I said, mainly we're talking about um, the, the tourism sector, the travel agents. If we f measures under the Transport and Housing Bureau uh, will be to support um, industries that cannot uh, operate at all, uh, though supporting uh, flight services and uh, cross-boundary coaches, ferries, and high cars. Uh, last year, we didn't. Um, uh, cancelled the New Year Fair and also the Dine and Wine Festival or Carnival and uh, we have uh, measures to help them. So uh, for the uh, uh, Dine and Wine Carnival, we um, refund the uh, rental and on top of that we give a 50% uh, on top of that as well. So uh, it will be a refund plus another 50% of what was paid to the government. And that was uh, for the uh, New Year market and for the food and uh, wine festival. Uh, that's There are similar arrangements. Meanwhile, we will continue to enhance our testing capacity. Our testing capacity is being maintained at over 100,000 tests per day. We have got uh, community t testing centers in all 18 districts. We have mobile uh, testing uh, stations and uh, recently we have focused our efforts in Tumun. Hopefully, our residents in Tumun can all be tested. As far as I know, uh, there aren't any more queues today, and uh, what we saw a few days ago is now relieved. I encourage all high-risk patients to make good use of our community testing centers and mobile uh, testing stations to help to uh, cut the silent transmission chains in the society. And we should also boost the vaccination rate. This time, we tackle the outbreak a little bit differently. Last time, uh, the outbreak was in November uh, 2020, and vaccination only started in uh, February 2021. So now, we have both uh, testing and vaccination. And uh, the number of uh, vaccinated is also growing. Uh, we have uh, added new vaccination centers, but I won't go into details. Now we are able to uh, give 1.77 doses per month or uh, 59,000 doses per day. We are able to cope with the uh, much higher demand for the first dose and the booster. We're able to cope with the demand because we are uh, giving 59,000 doses per day. We have uh, boosted our capacity by 75% compared with the start of the month. So we should be able to satisfy the demand for vaccines from the community. Last year, I'd like to appeal to the public once again, we must um, fight the virus together. Uh, 
to contain this outbreak caused uh, by Omicron. So I said uh, we will be able to uh, resume travel very soon because we are already uh, already and then uh, the main authorities are happy with our arrangements. We're able to have um, quarantine-free travel. Hopefully, we can together suppress the Omicron uh, transmission so that after a while we'll be able to enjoy quarantine-free travel with the mainland. So uh, please observe personal hygiene, wear your masks, and you should uh, monitor yourself and your family's uh, physical condition. And uh, you should pay attention to a location subject to uh, CTN and RODT released by the government. And during uh, festivals, uh, do not have a cross family gatherings. Avoid large crowds. For those who have not uh, been jabbed, please uh, arrange uh, to receive the vaccines ASAP. Iposia and Dr. Lam, Director of Health, uh, will uh, brief you on his. Uh, view of the current pandemic situation from the health perspective. Thank you. I'd like to report to you uh, the trend of uh, the pandemic. Globally, over uh, 300,000 people have been infected and over 2.5 million lives were lost. Omicron is now the mainstay uh, vi vi variant, and uh, as of yesterday, we have uh, 327 Omicron cases in Hong Kong. 295 of them were imported, and for local or import-related local cases, amount to 32. And uh, the uh, virus has spread in the community. As said by the chief executive, we have two major clusters, one being uh, the uh, Moon Palace uh, cluster uh, uh, rising from case 12611. So 15 cases are confirmed or positive cases. Another cluster uh, stemmed from uh, the uh, female flight attendant 12671. Six, she uh, spread the virus to her mother, uh, who spread it in the dance cluster. Forty-four cases um, were involved in this cluster. Now we cannot uh, be too optimistic with regard to the development of the pandemic situation. In the past week, we. Had about five to eight um, import linked cases uh, tested positive per day, whereas in previous waves of outbreak, where before there was an explosive outbreak, there were um, about 10 days where sporadic cases were found every day. So we must not uh, let down gown guards at this moment. And as for the transmission in these clusters, you can see the rapid transmission and many silent, many transmission chains resulted in the community. The transmission uh, has taken place in uh, various uh, places and in various modes of uh, restaurants uh, with Western Chinese restaurants, uh, the Cha Tan or Ch Hong Kong style uh, class, uh, places and uh, hot pot shops, and then uh, in securities company and uh, security um, uh, guards and construction workers activities involve religious activities and uh, social gatherings, etc. And when we have a double digit number of cases per day, we would start to see vertical transmission in residential buildings, but this has happened very earlier on. Although we are talking about a double single digit of cases, but we have uh, Maple Gardens and uh, also uh, Meishan, a building in Taipo. There have been vertical transmissions in these two buildings. This um, demonstrates the high transmissibility 
of uh, the virus. And in tracing close contacts, we encountered difficulties. In one case, uh, there was a part-time worker in Sogo. At first, it was an unlinked case, but after vigorous tracing, it was found that it was a third-generation transmission case, and then it could be traced back to her father, the proprietor of a dispensary, and further tracing revealed that uh, he got it from the male flight attendant case 12611. So we uh, had to start with the third generation and trace it back to the first generation. Meanwhile, there could be some transmissions already taking place in the community. And so it's difficult to trace these cases. There were cases uh, with no known source of infection at the 58-year-old uh, supermarket goods handler. Uh, from the uh, genome sequencing, uh, we could link it to the dance uh, cluster, but um, it, it's not clear how the transmission took place. So there is a likelihood that silent chains of transmission still exist. Uh, for those um, who have been infected with Omicron, um, the analysis um, also gave us some indications. Now, looking at the 32, um, cases are uh, linked with uh, imported cases. Well over 80 percent um, show a CT value of um, less than 30. It means that um, the viral load is pretty high and the transmissibility is also high. Uh, like the chief executive uh, said a moment ago, if you analyze all these 32 cases, 30 percent of them um, were asymptomatic. In the community, the uh, spread uh, might have occurred um, unawares. So basically, going forward, uh, we still have um, to face um, the development uh, with due caution. Now, we are on the verge of a volcano. We still haven't been able to steer clear of um, the volcano, as it were, because uh, we've seen new cases uh, cropping up on a daily basis. There is still a, a risk of um, silent transmission, and Omicron is a highly infectious only with a one silent chain of transmission and only with a one super spreader uh, will we see an exponential growth of cases. So to avert um, the crisis and to avert uh, the, the situation, I think the whole of Hong Kong do need to uh, observe the following protocol. Uh, first, um, please uh, use the Leave Home Safe app. I mentioned the difficulties, the challenges of tracing the uh, close contacts. And many time they have, uh, they don't have the focused idea of where they've been and how long they've been at a certain place. And it would take an awful long time for us to, to identify the details, and we may miss some um, the the uh, golden opportunity. So please uh, use the Leave Home Safe app uh, as much as you can. Second, uh, go get the jab. We mentioned um, the whole family of uh, the dispensary and the. Um, flight attendants, uh, family, um, a lot of them um, have not been inoculated, and that's one of the reasons why uh, transmission occurred, uh, because of the higher viral load. Also, uh, for, for these uh, locally acquired Omicron cases, uh, the median weight age is um, more than 50. People of more advanced ages, um, are uh, more likely to uh, to be infected with Omicron. So for senior citizens, um, we urge them to uh, get a jab as soon as possible. Furthermore, um, once you get tested as soon as possible, if you've been to certain places, however short the time was, uh, we would urge you to uh, go get tested if um, you are feeling discomfort uh, in any way. Uh, please. Uh, go seek medical attention uh, to, to identify the problems as soon as possible. We would also like to urge um, the healthcare workers uh, to stay alert and vigilant, and they should um, send um, the um, potential sufferers uh, for testing. We have to uh, keep 
a mask on. We have to uh, wash our hands uh, regularly, and we should avoid social activities as soon as possible. Uh, many of the um, inter-family um, gatherings um, saw uh, some spread uh, taking place. So over the Lunar New Year, please uh, avoid the uh, inter-family uh, gatherings as much as possible. I'm sure that um, if we can pull together and, and um, take these measures, we will be able to, to avert the uh, situation. We cannot um, take the situation lightly. Uh, let's uh, work together and let's hope that uh, we can emerge from this um, adverse situation as soon as possible. Now, I throw the floor open for questions. Um, please identify the organization you work for and please speak into the microphone. Um, the one at the back, uh, to the right, please. Thank you, RTHK. Now, for the uh, um, ECF, you mentioned that after the social distancing measures um, expired, um, the premises can reopen, uh, subject, of course, to the vaccine bubble. Now, if uh, these premises um, have to be closed uh, for a longer period of time, or would there be additional uh, funding or subsidy for them? The Lunar New Year is supposed to be uh, the, the uh, busy period. Uh, do you think that um, they should be offered more uh, subsidy to make up for the, um, the losses over the Lunar New Year? It seems that the government doesn't really want to uh, seek further funding from Let's Go uh, for this um, ECE. ECF, why do you uh, want to um, just use the remainder of the, the fund? Why don't you seek more funding from Let's Go to help the, the uh, businesses? Social distancing measures, is it likely that um, prior to uh, the third day of the Lunar New Year, if uh, we have seen uh, an ease off of the cases, um, uh, that, that you're going to be um, lifting uh, some of the restrictions? And if um, these premises uh, were to adopt um, the vaccine bubble, uh, they, they can be opened um, sooner. Uh, how much uh, do you think um, the restrictions can be eased? Right, a whole barrage of questions. First of all, we do not rule out the possibility of, because of um, the, the, um, the, the implications of um, COVID, we do not rule out the possibility of going to Let's Go again. In fact, uh, many Let's Go members made some remarks that they've written to me and also uh, to the CS. We have to make things happen very quickly and also with uh, the funding uh, in the ECF, we are able to um, tackle the problem. So we are of the view that we shouldn't wait uh, because uh, we have to prioritize um, the, uh, all these uh, premises that are firstly affected. I do not rule out the possibility to answer your question. If we do need to have um, further funding, I'm sure the Let's Go members would be very supportive. I'm sure they, they will be uh, taking the initiative uh, to make uh, some suggestions having regard to the situation. So this is some um, uh, positive interaction between the executive and the legislature. And as a result of the improve, improvement uh, to the uh, electoral system, the executive and the legislature should be um, working together. And we have this uh, round of funding. If there is a need, uh, we can certainly um, discuss with uh, LegCo. The COVID um, may not uh, be disappearing in um, just a couple of days, and we can set our mind at ease even if um, the, there is um, um, an um, recedence, it may take some time. And hopefully, um, within 14 days, we don't have any local cases, um, then we can uh, take further measures. And we certainly would have an interim review until the expiry. And it is, we're not going to um, lift um, the, the measures yet. I think we have to be determined enough in order to achieve um, zero COVID, and all these measures are necessary. For the premises, I think we have to um, spell things out uh, in no uncertain terms. 
I'm sure um, if the catering premises would like to resume um, their, their uh, nighttime dining, uh, they will have to, to do the recruitment um, to, to get the ingredients prepared and so on. And so we will be implementing all these social distancing measures. Now, what is different now is that on the 4th of February, unless uh, we've seen a dramatic um, worsening of the situation or a uh, large-scale outbreak, barring this happening, we will be reopening the, best, the, the businesses, but they will have to be subject to a vaccine bubble. This is um, floated by the business, like the, the catering business or the beauty sector, and they, they can require the, the patrons to be vaccinated. And we will be having the vaccine bubble requirement on the 24th of February. If um, they follow the, the vaccine bubble uh, measure, and if uh, the patrons are vaccinated, and they, they, they will be OK. As to the um, fifth round of um, subsidy, now we have uh, $4 billion or so uh, in the fund that we will be taking advantage of this uh, remain, uh, remaining fund uh, in the ECF uh, to, to help the premises and individuals affected uh, by uh, this infection. But nothing is absolute if um, the COVID situation were to worsen and if um, the sectors uh, that they haven't quite uh, recovered, they cannot uh, recover in the near future, then, then we will consider further. Now, for the tourism sector, for instance, uh, for the travel agencies, uh, we are basically talking about 6.0 instead of 5.0, because last year, after the uh, 4.0, we have ramped up uh, the subsidy for them. Now, for uh, the premises that have been closed for uh, more than 100 days, uh, we have uh, ramped up um, the, the subsidy after uh, 4.0. Now, we didn't quite call that uh, 5.0, but we have actually ramped up the subsidies uh, for these uh, premises that have been closed for a prolonged period of time. The uh, SAL government will be monitoring the situation uh, when necessary. We will be supporting and uh, subsidizing these premises and individuals. I don't talk to them. Next. Um, the lady on the left. I'm for Oriental Daily. Right. Uh, Last year, uh, the Lunar New Year Fair was uh, restored after cancellation in order to satisfy the need of the public. Now, this year, you've decided to cancel it. Is it because uh, you of the view that the pandemic situation is more serious than last year, or you have totally ignored the expirations of the uh, farmers and also operators? Now, this is really the second year where people cannot have a joyous Happy New Year. Would you say that uh, there is certainly of duty on the part of um, the uh, government. You uh, can you, uh, for instance, now later you are going to introduce the vaccine bubble, and then uh, the premises uh, can start operation. Now, uh, why um, haven't you tightened uh, the measures earlier? And Mrs. Lam, your term is close to. Uh, an end. Uh, can you tell us uh, your inclination whether you want to seek a second term? Uh, as usual, I'm not going to comment on your second question, um, irrespective of uh, where and on what occasion the um, question is put to me by the reporter. All right, um, Professor Chen can talk about our decision on cancelling the Nuna New Year Fair. Now we can see that there is a global outbreak of Omicron. Uh, places that uh, had the uh, pandemic well under control, uh, that had uh, resumed uh, traveling, well, they have tightened their measures once again. And in places in the U.S. or Europe, uh, there have been uh, demonstrations and riots because uh, the, the people there are just fed up with the social distancing measures. In fact, um, uh, viruses know no boundary unless uh, we uh, we uh, have a complete lockdown and close all our borders. In fact, uh, we have um, 
almost uh, the most stringent measures in preventing importation. Only Hong Kong residents are allowed to come back. We have already suspended flights from eight countries, and many people complain that they're not able to come back. So it's not about whether the government has done uh, well. We have already done our utmost in containing the pandemic, and we have seen some achievement in the past week. We are doing utmost to control the pandemic so that we can uh, be uh, free of these cases and we can have uh, quarantine-free travel. As regards how we can give hope to the industries in a matter of three weeks, because anti-epidemic measures or social distancing measures cannot be in place forever, I always say that it is difficult for me to strike a balance, the gives and takes. Now, because uh, in the past week or so we have seen a higher vaccination rate, I said in the past that if we could have uh, 20,000 uh, jabs, uh, for people with, uh, receiving the vaccine for the first time, then by the time we have our vaccination bubble on the 24th of February, the uh, vaccination rate uh, could uh, be as high as 90 percent. Dr. Lam can confirm that with this high rate of vaccination, the place is relatively safer. So compared with previous waves, we are more confident if we do not see uh, deterioration in the current situation. If we do not have a major outbreak, we'd like to give some hope to these premises. We will do our utmost to allow them to operate to a certain extent, but then it will be on the basis of a vaccination bubble. Dr. Sophia Chen, regarding cancellation of the Nuna New Year Fair, the government has decided to uh, cancel Nuna New Year Fairs in uh, 15 locations has been a difficult decision because traditionally we know that uh, people like to uh, go to New Year Fair and then uh, the uh, flower farmers have uh, labored for one year and of course they want to sell their um, produce. But if we have the general picture in view, Dr. Lam and also the CE have told us that we are uh, still um, in some danger. We still have a few transmission chains in society. We do our utmost to cut them, but tracing, contact tracing has not been easy. So our overall assessment is that there are still risks. And as we all know, a New Year Fairs are always crowded, and there will be a gathering of crowds. We would like to reduce mass gatherings and to uh, cut the transmission chains and to prevent transmission. So protecting the life and health of the public is more important. So we have decided to cancel large-scale Nuna New Year Fairs. The FEHD will refund in full uh, the costs already uh, paid to the uh, store operators. And as said by the chief executive, the relevant uh, rental, I mean, uh, store operators will be given an excretion payment of 50% of what they have paid. The uh, FEHD will try their is very best to contact these uh, store um, operators as soon as possible. Uh, the lady in front, I'm from cable TV. You said that you hopefully you can uh, contain the uh, pandemic situation very soon and then uh, people can uh, do business uh, before the Nuna New Year. Now you're saying that you have to defer that to after the Nuna New Year. How confident are you? Even experts like Professor Yun Kwok Yong said that we can control the pandemic. So why don't you relax the measures earlier so that uh, you can allow uh, restaurants to operate, to operate until 10 p.m. so people can have a year-end dinners. Now, Ao Ka Wang and um, Alex and Casper Choi are still under 
quarantine, uh, will you ask them to step down to show the uh, accountability for this event for the restaurant? Uh, holding the uh, party for 225 persons. What is your progress of uh, investigation for uh, Wong Xia, who uh, has concealed her um, various um, itinerary and uh, lied? Are you going to uh, take action against her? Now, assessment of uh, the Pandemic situation is a job for the director of health. Of course, many experts helping the government have their own views. Some say that uh, the situation is uh, quite well and is under control. Unless we have more local sources, uh, the situation uh, should be under control. But then another expert would come out at once to say that he disagrees and the situation is not that optimistic. All right, Dr. Lee, director. Dr. Lam, Director of Health, has just gave us an analysis. He is of the view that uh, the pandemic is not yet under control and there is still a risk of major outbreak. And so we have to continue the social distancing measures. Our ultimate goal is to protect uh, Hong Kong citizens. Sometimes we have uh, to balance. If the pandemic situation is not too bad, we relax some of the social distancing measures to allow businesses to operate and people to um, have some activities. But uh, for this uh, round of the outbreak arising from Omicron, I just given I've just gave you my assessment. In the coming couple of weeks, uh, we will be uh, taking all the necessary measures like testing and contact tracing to make sure that um, before the social distancing measures come to an end um, on the 4th of uh, February or the fourth day of the Lunar New Year, we would be more confident and we would instill hope uh, in, into the community. As to the um, birthday gathering, there are 15 government officials that are involved, and they include um, the former um, direct, um, Commissioner of uh, Customs and Excise, uh, who are proceeding to retirement. So we, I've already made an, uh, uh, an announcement that we will uh, follow up on this um, seriously. The internal probe hasn't quite com uh, completed, so it's not appropriate for me uh, to respond to you in terms of um, individuals. But having said that, I will be approaching the issue uh, with uh, imp impartiality and deal with um, the individuals who have attended um, in the um, party. And I will be um, giving, a, giving an account. Professor, now for the uh, FHD's investigation into the uh, restaurant, um, work is in hand. Uh, that There is an, a criminal investigation if there are any breaches of the law that, that they will um, phase prosecution. We'll have to make sure that the investigation um, and the prosecution will be done in a fair and just manner. As for the uh, restaurant, uh, it is subject to, to CAP uh, 559F, and uh, that is um, of um, the PCDO, and thi this restaurant is um, a Group D or Category D um, premises. The responsible person, uh, the, the staff members, and, and the customers uh, will have to abide by the uh, legislation. Like, uh, for instance, um, whether they have um, scanned the Leave Home Safe app, or whether they have um, kept the mask on, and so on, and these are part of the requirements. If the patrons uh, fail to observe, um, CAP 559F and 559G uh, group gathering and 599I uh, regarding uh, face mask um, wearing. And, and all these um, provisions uh, will apply if in the investigation uh, we find that um, there are um, breaches or non-compliance. The Senate, there will be um, penalties. And under CAP 132, um, that's the municipal services um, ordinance. Um, they um, hold down a uh, general license, a restaurant license, 
and we will be um, conducting the investigation along this line as well. As I said, if in the course of investigation um, some people have uh, breached the legislation and if they have uh, made available the equipment, karaoke equipment and so on, uh, then the, the uh, FEHD will act in accordance with the law and take out prosecution action. Speaker, not coming through. Uh, will you uh, yield the floor to other reporters? Uh, the lady in front, in blue, please. South China Morning Post. First of all, can we trust the government this time that the social distancing rules will be lifted by February 3? Because a lot of businesses are hoping on that to be resumed. Uh, what is the threshold for opening such premises? And uh, can these businesses operate under a vaccine bubble, even if there are still some local cases by then? And in today's banner that it says we want to resume travel as well, but it's really difficult for people to believe that given that there are 150 countries on high risk and eight countries banned altogether at this point. So will this have any um, impact on Hong Kong's cargo flights and cargo logistics at this point? And what can you do to guarantee that these flight bans will be eased and flight will be um, resumed in a gradual manner to Hong Kong? A third question is on schools. So you didn't mention schools today so far. So how long will schools have to shut? And what is the vaccine requirement for children aged under 12 by after Chinese New Year? Thank you. Um, all right, uh, three questions altogether. Uh, the first general response is, I'm afraid nobody could give any guarantee in a public health uh, a crisis like this. Uh, no one could guarantee whether we will have another uh, dangerous uh, variant after Omicron. So uh, the health authorities and every government are trying their very, very best to um, fight the uh, pandemic in order to protect uh, their people. So uh, Hong Kong has been um, uh, fighting COVID-19 for exactly two years, and we have managed to protect our people. As I have just uh, quoted, uh, in terms of total number of confirmed cases, well, we were behind over 170 countries globally. In terms of uh, confirmed cases per 1 million population and uh, fatalities per 1 million population, we are only 4% of the global average, let alone compared with uh, the USA or European countries. So we have been doing our very best, but no one could give a guarantee because uh, this uh, virus is, is changing and changing uh, quite rapidly from one variant to another variant. Now, uh, apart from that general response, I would say that in terms of social distancing measures, on this occasion, uh, we have listened to what the trade has uh, told us, that they want a little bit more certainty. Previously, we just wrote out or the uh, social distancing measures, 14 days, another 14 days, or even without an end date. Uh, so this has created a lot of anxiety and uncertainties for the trade. Now that we are in a situation better than the fourth wave because of vaccination, and I hope to see the vaccination rate to go up, say to over 80 or close to 90%, that will give us a better basis to now foretell that by then, after this um, uh, expiry of the second 14 days, then we may be able to allow these premises to start operating again under a vaccine bubble. Uh, in other words, uh, their staff and customers have to be vaccinated before they can go into the premises. Uh, but again, there's no guarantee, uh, because if the Omicron uh, variant has uh, given rise to a major outbreak in Hong Kong, then I, I don't think the Hong Kong population would uh, support us to blindly uh, lift the social distancing measures and putting our people at risk. So that is the situation. Now about resuming travel, of course we want to resume travel with the mainland and resume travel with the rest of the world. Uh, since we have attained um, local zero, that is no local infection for a very long time, uh, we have to uh, be very um, vigilant in ensuring we are not importing cases. So when you look around the world, um, we have um, two million, three million cases uh, every day. We, we should be worried about allowing more uh, travelers coming from those places, and hence we are putting countries under Group A or enhanced Group A, uh, which we will uh, put on even more restrictions. That would certainly have a major impact on many aspects of Hong Kong, 
it's not just a cargo. The cargo uh, is more affected by the uh, latest imposition of uh, stringent measures on the airlines. But uh, without traveling or uh, quarantine uh, free uh, arrangement for overseas arrivals, that of course uh, affect Hong Kong uh, being an international city, uh, an international financial center, a business hub, uh, investors coming in, the organization of major events and concerts and uh, art uh, shows and so on. We know very well there are consequences. But we have to weigh these consequences against the, um, the health risk to the people of Hong Kong uh, because um, uh, these uh, viruses could kill people. Uh, if you look at um, the world, uh, hundreds of people are still dying in uh, every European country now, nowadays. And I, I have my utmost duty to uh, protect the health of the Hong Kong people. Uh, cargo flights will be affected uh, by the latest measures uh, because of the uh, non-compliance by a, a couple of uh, crew people. And so as a result of that, I already uh, warned that uh, there will be a shortage of uh, cargo flights, which means that there will be a significant uh, uh, drop in uh, cargoes and goods being brought in uh, by air. And uh, I noticed that many people are already um, commenting that that sort of situation will shortly emerge in Hong Kong. Now about schools, uh, we have uh, only suspended face-to-face uh, -face learning in all kindergartens and childcare centers as well as primary school from primary one to primary six. We will try our very best and by now I think we could confidently say that we will allow secondary schools to operate face-to-face -face learning until they have the Chinese New Year holiday. Uh, after the Chinese New Year holiday, um, of course, uh, uh, we would like to see schools resuming their face-to-face -face, uh, learning. But again, there could be no guarantee because much will depend on what will happen in the next two to three weeks in Hong Kong's uh, COVID-19 situation. But the, uh, applying vaccination to young children is a state government policy. I mentioned it uh, earlier this week. So uh, we will, after Chinese New Year, especially when uh, uh, school children uh, go back to school, we will arrange uh, school-based outreaching vaccination teams to uh, apply vaccination to children from 5 to 11 uh, in schools. But we will not go that far to make vaccination a prerequisite for going back to school because um, education is a right of the child. So we will honor the child's right to be educated at school, but we will do all our best to encourage and promote vaccination amongst young children for their own sake. Thank you. Last question of the day. Uh, the gentleman on the right. I'm from Commercial Radio. So uh, at the beginning, uh, Mrs. Salem said that we were all ready for quarantine free travel with the mainland. And uh, when the pandemic is under control, then uh, we can have a date. Uh, is there any specific target, for instance, a number of days uh, after which we uh, had zero infection, then we can uh, ask for quarantine free travel with the mainland authorities? Now, this year we're not going to have the Nuna New Year fairs as well. Last year, even before we had any vaccination, we allowed uh, some New Year fairs. This year we have had some vaccination and closing down the Nuna New Year fair, would you call that too draconian? And now, uh, experience uh, tells us that last year people could go to the flower market because of the cancellation of the New Year Fair. So will this measure be uh, counterproductive? Now, you're going to operate a vaccine bubble and um, customers or people involved are required to have the first or second jab. Would you think that such a kind of vaccine bubble is going to be effective? because many people have uh, got lower levels of antibodies. So will you review the arrangement of the vaccine bubble in due course? I think uh, Dr. Lam and also Professor Chen uh, can talk about the flower markets and also uh, arrangement of the vaccine bubble. And I'll talk about uh, resuming travel. Thank you, CE. As I said, uh, 
cancellation of the Lunar New Year Fair is a difficult position. On the one hand, we want, we know members of the public would like to uh, visit Lunar New Year Fairs, and the flower farmers would like to sell their produce. But then we want to protect the public and the pandemic situation is such that we are still in some danger. There are still silent transmission chains. Should there be transmission in flower markets, even if we adopt a vaccine bubble for uh, operation of the New Year Fair, then there is no 100% sure that there will be no transmission. So balancing all factors, and given the current pandemic situation, we've decided to cancel the Lunar New Year Fair. You mentioned the situation last year. Well, we have learned a lesson from last year. Of course, we will uh, communicate with flower farmers as soon as possible. Last year, they used uh, their own ways to sell their produce. And uh, at Chinese New Year, apart from New Year flower markets, there are places that can be crowded as well. So please uh, respond to the CS appeal. Please avoid crowded places. So please uh, take care of uh, this. As for vaccination and also the booster, the Director of Health can tell you uh, the discussion of the joint committees, joint scientific committees. We appeal to the public for those who have not even received uh, their first dose, please be vaccinated as soon as possible. We have seen a very uh, pleasing rising trend Every day we are seeing about 10 to 20,000 of uh, first doses uh, being administered. I think this is a good sign, a good trend, because that can protect our public. And over 0 0.6 million have already uh, taken the third jab. So for those who have yet to receive the first dose and those uh, who are uh, uh, are ready for the third for the booster to come out to receive the jabs, Dr. Lam. The uh, experts and also the Joint Scientific Committee have reviewed much literature and discussed uh, what is meant by fully vaccinated. So, for both uh, vaccines, whether it be Sinovac or BioNTech. A full vaccination means having received both doses. Why are we promoting a booster? Because uh, whether it be local or overseas research studies, six months after the um, two doses, uh, the level of uh, neutral antibodies do dust drop for both vaccines. So uh, a booster is needed to raise the level of neutral antibodies. A rise in uh, neutral antibodies can effectively make the um, symptoms milder, even if you have contracted the disease, but as for uh, uh, scientifically, it is proven that in terms of T cells and uh, the death rate and uh, the need for hospitalization, uh, you fare better with uh, the booster. And of course, uh, when there are new uh, variant and new mutant strain, we will discuss with the Joint Scientific Committee to see uh, whether uh, further action has to be taken. Why do I say that uh, we will soon uh, resume our border travel? Because what we have done 
will not be wasted with the staunch support of the central authorities. We have done a lot of interface work, much of time under the leadership of the CS4A. Whether we are talking about our delegation going to Shamjan and their experts coming to uh, take a look in Hong Kong, but that was before Omicron appeared in Hong Kong. So in general, if we have got a zero infection, a zero local, um, a zero unlinked cases for 14 days, then there is hope that we can resume quarantine-free travel with the mainland. And therefore, we have taken decisive and um, expeditious and uh, targeted measures to stop the transmission of Omicron. We have already done a lot, but because uh, we have yet to um, realize uh, quarantine free travel, I don't want to dwell into them in great details, but both parts, both sides have done a lot so long as our uh, pandemic situation is under control, then uh, as always, the central authorities will uh, support that we allow a normal uh, flow of uh, people between the two places. So uh, let's uh, stand together, let's unite and fight the virus together so we can create the favorable environment for quarantine-free travel. The press briefing and see ya. Thank you.